the tradition, the pride, the student athletes. That's what sets Boston College apart in the football world. On this episode, we present two highlight films that sets Boston College apart on the football field. First, the dominating victory against Temple. Second, an overtime home thriller against Missouri. Are you ready? We sure are. This one deep for Zay Flowers at the five, got it, to the end zone! Touchdown, Boston College! We'll be singing for Boston in here. Everybody grab a hand. Yes, sir. Excitement over a 2-0 start was met with the realistic challenge of overcoming mounting injuries as Boston College played its second straight on the road at Temple. Play after play after play! And you reload, man. Fast, physical, and fearless! Family on three! One, two, three! Family. Family. Love each other and let that shine all throughout the game today. Be fearless, be confident, have each other's back no matter what. While the Eagles are chomping at the bit to get to conference play, they remained laser focused on the September business at hand, starting with Travis Levy continuing his kick return magic. Travis Levy, back deep, he is dangerous. And Levy finds a crease and he's off. Yeah! And make it to him, throw it to the outside as a flower. With Phil Dracovic injured, Dennis Grossell was making his first start of the season. His first two passes were completions that got BC a lead. They would hold the rest of the game. Touchdown, Jaden Williams. 19-yard touchdown pass to Jaden Williams, his first of the season. And BC strikes first. They would strike again and many times on defense, mixing and matching blitzes and coverage while holding Temple without a first down on their first three possessions. <laughs> Meanwhile, Grossell settled in nicely, and after he came out throwing, the Eagles started to churn out ground yardage with Pat Garwo. Look at the hole. He's across midfield. Inside the 20. The Temple Owls had no answer for the Eagles offensive line. Fifth straight running play for BC. Make it six straight and Garwu scores a touchdown. It was the perfect game plan for a quarterback trying to get his feet wet as a starter. 
A solid running game and great defense made the 14-0 lead feel like 40 to nothing to a Temple team led by dual threat quarterback Justin Lynch. But the Eagles frustrated him at almost every turn. Five times the Owls went three and out, three other times Boston College stopped them on fourth down. Lynch, keeper. Drilled by IGM. The former Temple Owl. There's a little bit of energy in this coaching staff for Boston College. Now third and six. Rochelle, plenty of room. Takes off, he's got a first down, a whole lot more. Boston College started the week with the seventh highest scoring offense in the country, and they were on the move again late in the second quarter. Swing it out to Flowers, he's got it now. And the block, Flowers down the sideline. Say Flowers. Knocked out of bounds at the five yard line, Amir Tyler saved a touchdown. 50 yard pickup. Against Temple, the Eagles passed when necessary or when the Owls were not expecting it. But whether they put the ball up or ran it, they had the blocking for the plays to work. It was apparent early that this would be a team effort with all facets contributing. But in true Boston College style, the success started up front. Levy, the lone setback. He's got it right up the middle. Touchdown, BC. With two wins behind them and two big games in front of them, it was a credit to the Boston College players and coaches alike that they stayed on point for the challenge of this day against a Temple team that had six straight non-losing seasons before a COVID-ravaged 2020. BC is really trying to groom their identity with Missouri and Clemson right down the road in the next couple of weeks. The 21-0 lead did not make the Eagles comfortable, and in turn, they did not make things comfortable for the Owls. Four times they sacked Lynch, and they never let up. So now fourth and six. Lynch to Jones, and he's shy. A lot of defense, a thumping running game, and punter Grant Carlson, named ACC Specialist of the Week, made for a special road trip. That's a great step, special teams play by Elijah Jones. He's done that a couple of times here today. BC's first visit to Lincoln Financial Field in 17 years grew more pleasant with each snap. Only a fourth quarter field goal prevented a shutout, while the offense still had some juice. From their own 42. Sinkfield helped change the pace for a running game that was more about heart and will. Immeasurable qualities that put up measurable stats, like averaging nearly five yards per run. Sinkfield again. Again over that right side. Another first down. Nothing demoralizes a defense more than knowing you're going to run against it and they still can't stop it. Sinkfield averaged nearly six yards a carry himself and he helped put the finishing touches on another win, rushing for more than half of the yards on the Eagles' final scoring drive. Fourth and a yard. From the two. Quarterback keep. No signal yet. Touchdown, BC. Grossell started the day with a touchdown pass and ended it with a touchdown run. And in between, the defense was rock solid as they improved to 3 0, with some former Temple players and an athletic director getting game balls and a triumphant return to Philly. 3-0. It's 3 three and oh. Enjoy it. Sure. This is my favorite one of the year so far, and I mean it. Yeah, I just felt something was missing, and I felt it today. Are we going to always score 40 points? No, we're not. Defense, the way you rebounded, and that was that was impressive. The fourth down stops. And, and awesome, awesome. Shot, 
offensively you scored 28 points and you and you finished them off at the end of the game. But that's what you did. And don't take these for granted. You're 3-0. Yes, and there's not many teams right now that are 3-0. Now we're gonna get better. I don't care who's playing, I don't care who's in. You guys are special. And you're so much fun to coach, and I love you. I got three game balls for this, and then we'll look tomorrow. Where's my man IGM at? Yeah! I challenge this guy to finish. Banksy, you deserve yeah! it. I appreciate y'all for, you know, welcoming me with open arms and everything like that. Let's go, BC. Yeah. 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 I, need, I need the ball, man. I need the ball. <laughs> hey, but I will say this, though, about this team, man, where, where you are different is when guys come in, which is different, you guys, it, you guys welcome them, and you want them to succeed. That's why we're going to win a lot of football games. And then the last one, we got to give it. Yes, sir. To yes, sir. Yeah. I love you guys. That, this one means a lot to me, it means a lot to us. There is nowhere else in the world that I'd rather be than be right here with you. I love you, I'm humbled, I'm proud to be your athletic director. Let's keep this going. Yeah! On a glorious Massachusetts afternoon, Boston College was set for their biggest test of the still young season. They had a perfect record after three lopsided wins, but knew this was their biggest test to date. With a visit from Missouri, the Tigers, the first SEC team to visit Alumni Stadium in 34 years. There was a charge in the atmosphere that started hours before kickoff as the fans and players alike couldn't wait for this one to get started. Perfect day for football in New England. 72 degrees as we get ready to go. The game would be nationally televised with a chance for the Eagles to show everyone what's been simmering on Chestnut Hill. This was a chance for the Eagles to emerge from what has become a cloudy ACC picture. A chance for them to prove what they already knew themselves, that they are a force to be reckoned with within the conference. It would begin with high hopes and end with conviction. Because in between, the Eagles did what they had to do to stay unbeaten. They worked their tails off and they stared down adversity. And that included giving up a touchdown to open the game. Now going with tempo, the throw to the end zone, touchdown. Barrett Bannister and Missouri scores on its opening drive. Here comes the pressure up the middle. Rossell gets rid of it, and that's a catch and a big run. Out to the 35-yard line, that is Flowers. BC took one to the jaw to start off, and they were about to answer with a roundhouse of their own. Center Grossell, deep handoff. Here's Carroll bouncing off tackles. Back to the middle of the field. To the 20. Goodbye touchdown, Pat Garwell. 67 yards, and BC answers. Jeff Halfley and his staff knew the Tigers had been susceptible to the run, and they planned to add to their woes. It was on, as the highly anticipated matchup would live up to its hype and more. Alumni Stadium was rocking, and a full afternoon of back and forth football entertainment was just getting started. 
Now it was time for the defense to join the party. And Isaiah Graham Mobley and Marcus Valdez were happy to oblige. They and their crew helped get the ball back, where the big uglies up front for BC continued what would be a game-long theme, imposing their will and controlling the trench. And now here's Alex Singfield, a nice change of pace back. Gets to the outside, inside the 20, as Missouri's run defense continues to struggle. Second and eight, play action, Rosell hammered it to Flowers. And he's down at the 11-yard line. Dennis Grossell was leading a BC attack with a mix of pass and run that kept the Tigers off balance, and the Eagles were about to take their first lead of the game. Well, there's no line so far living up to its billing. There's some future NFL stars in that front five. Grossell cleaning the pocket to the end zone, but that is a touchdown. Jaden Williams having a great true freshman year. Freshman to seniors, age doesn't matter to a Boston College team that gets contributions from across the roster. Already having suffered injuries at several key offensive positions, the next man up mentality continued to work as each team tried to find an advantage. Rosell backpedaling, now steps up, down the middle wide open, C.J. Lewis. To the 25-yard line of Missouri, Connor Litton, a true freshman, first career field goal attempt to try and tie it from 49. You bet, got it. Center Bell style offense for the Eagles. Grossell getting some pressure up the middle. Now he's going to run for the first down. Nobody there. Grossell away from center, little play fake, and there is. Jalen Gill fires and gets it to C.J. Lewis. On second down, there's Garwo. Look out, touchdown. Wow. Pat Garwo's second touchdown put Boston College back on top in the third quarter. He would pile up 175 yards in the Eagles' impressive rushing attack. And their ability to run the ball gave them the confidence to take chances at the most critical times of the ball game. Going to keep the offense out on fourth and four. Grossell. Can he win the race? Diving! The Eagles owned the clock in the third quarter. Missouri only had the ball for a minute 18, providing a 10 point BC lead heading to the fourth. We're going to give it to Big Michael Cox. The walk on running back, and he walks on in for a touchdown. Beatty. Through the hole, touchdown, Missouri. What a drive. I care about that BC logo right on your chest, because that's why we all do this. And I know right now, if you guys just go for four quarters, and you keep swinging, and you stay together, and when something bad hits you, you just smile and says, bring it on. Yes, and that fourth quarter, we're going to be in here singing for Boston. Yes, Let's go. go Coach Halfley had his team ready for fourth quarter drama, and they responded the way he predicted they would. Rolling out. Comes back to his tight end, Lucchetti, the big body. Rosell continued to spread the ball around, and that included keeping it himself as the Eagles drove to take the lead back. It'll be Grossell on the keeper. Grossell, hands off, Levy finds a hole, finds the end zone, touchdown, Travis Levy. Just muscled his way into the end zone with 25 seconds left. Go with what brought you here, right? It's been the run game all day long for Boston College. The entire Boston College team was flexing its way in this one. They banged out 275 rushing yards, and they would need every ounce of muscle for a game that was destined to go overtime. Stepping up, Bazelak, and that is caught by Kiki Chisholm. But it's got to be quick, only six seconds. Bazelak goes to that sideline, and there's Bannister again. 
Harrison Nevis. Got it! Wow! And we're tied up. Nevis with a career long to send this one to overtime. That could have stunned the lesser team, but this is what the long hours of quality practice and film study does. So a third down here. Fake the jet sweep to Flowers. Man wide open, it's Levy. He's got a first down. He lowers that shoulder again. He picks up 10. They prepare a team to produce in clutch situations, and the Eagles did just that. To the end zone, Flowers is open, touchdown. Touched by Dennis Grossell. Now it was time for the defense to step up. And the Tigers get their chance in overtime. He wants to throw on first down, steps into it toward the end zone, and that is intercepted. Picked off. Brandon Sebastian and Boston College is going to win this game. An early autumn celebration for an entire community for a football team that is still undefeated heading into conference play. I told you guys we would take this in the fourth. Now, I didn't know we'd have to take it in the overtime, but the reason I was so confident, guys, and I mean that, you're different. You are. What Father Jack said today is exa it's exactly the truth. Yep. You faced adversity early in the game. You didn't flinch. When a lot of people probably would have thought we were going to go down 14, 21, nothing. Yep. We had the game in the bag with 20 seconds left, and the kid made an 80-yard field goal, but you still didn't flinch because you do love each other, because you don't play for yourself, because you don't play for your conference. You guys play for this right here, yeah, yeah. and you guys play for each other. Oh, and that's yeah. why I'm deceiving. That's why I'm so proud of you guys, and I love you guys so much. And I'm telling you guys, I wouldn't rather coach any team. Hell yeah! yeah.